This is Hypothesis 101, social annotation uh, for beginners. And uh, shout out to Michaela, rep, uh, current undergrad here. So we've got faculty and students, very cool faculty and students from across uh, North America, it looks like. Um, very exciting. And now we have the Northwest uh, represented uh, by Sarah. Um, this is Hypothesis 101. This is an introduction to the Hypothesis Social Annotation Tool. Um, when you're, uh, so that's what this is. If you're super familiar, you may get bored, but if you're new, this is the right place to be. Um, if you would like to ask a question or introduce yourself if you haven't done so already, remember to click all panelists and attendees when you, when you talk in the chat. And I do encourage you to ask questions in the chat. My colleague, Aaron, from our success, success program is here and can answer questions about the platform. And I'll try to circle back to any that would be relevant to the group as a whole. Um, and with all that housekeeping out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, so, and this is being recorded for the last piece of ho housekeeping. Thanks, Megan. Uh, and we will be emailing it out afterwards so that you can uh, review it yourself or, or share it with colleagues. So I used to use this uh, quote to introduce uh, social annotation to uh, beginners uh, years ago. It was, it's from 2012. There was an article about social annotation and social reading in the Chronicle of Higher Ed. And this is how Jennifer described what was then kind of a new technology. I stopped using the quote um, for, for many years, but then once the pandemic hit and folks really went to remote learning, I was reminded of it and brought it back in. And I, I shared at the beginning here, I know many of you are struggling. Many of you may be used to teaching remotely uh, online education. Uh, many might be new. Um, certainly there's a lot more remote uh, teaching and learning going on these days. And, and I take heart from this quote and I think some of our users take heart from this quote. Um, so I'm gonna share it with you at the beginning here. Online, a book, it can be any text. It can be an essay, a poem, textbook. Online, a book can be a gathering place, a shared space where readers record their reactions and conversations. And I take heart from that quote just because, you know, I, I taught um, I taught in the classroom uh, and I know it would be hard to figure out how to, to do my work if I was suddenly not able to go to the classroom. And I think tools like hypothesis, engagement tools uh, are, are very helpful in kind of creating and maintaining community uh, irregardless of pandemics, but, um, but certainly in a time when, when there's more remote learning and we're not able to get together uh, normally. Um, so a little bit about the Hypothesis organization. Um, we're an open source uh, tech project uh, and we build our annotation according to open standards, our annotation technology according to open standards. So we're a little bit unique in the uh, ed tech space as not being a proprietary uh, uh, tool. Um, and we got our start as a nonprofit. And so you can see at the bottom some of the foundations that funded our start as a nonprofit. Um, so I think we're, we're unique. And here's a glimpse of the team. As I mentioned, Aaron Barker from, uh, from Customer Success is here, as well as Franny uh, from Marketing, um, and they'll be answering questions uh, in the chat. So I'm, an, I'm a former English professor by training. I saw that some of you are, are from the humanities and there's a, some English folks specifically. Um, and well before I started trying to figure out how to you know, introduce digital pedagogy uh, to, my, to my students, um, I would share this quote, I would share this poem by Billy Collins at the beginning of every semester. I'd hand out the syllabus and I'd hand out this poem um, to try to inspire my students to write in the margins of their handouts and books and, and everything that we were reading. We've all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen if only to show we did not just laze in an armchair turning pages, we pressed a thought into the wayside, planted an impression along the verge. Uh, of course, there's, there's nothing radically new about this idea of annotation. It's been around since probably before even the invention uh, of the book. Um, I personally knew that annotation had been critical to my success as a student, as a scholar, and as an educator. Uh, and I believed that it would be critical to my students' success. So I really tried to emphasize that uh, from day one. Um, something happens when we start to, to teach online, and especially when we start to uh, read more online. And studies have shown that you know, students, or really any reader, uh, is often less engaged, uh, retains less uh, when they read online. Uh, and so something unfortunate happens when we start to deliver reading uh, in digital formats, um, we lose the margins of the page that we had in, in our analog books. 
um, and we aren't able to practice this critical sort of proven literacy skill of annotation when books move online. And so part of what Hypothesis is doing is trying to keep annotation alive uh, in a digital age as a critical literacy practice. Um, but also there's a number of affordances that can accrue when annotation takes place in a digital uh, networked uh, environment. So this is our vision of annotation 2.0, if you will, um, that any website, article, ebook, document, or piece of multimedia can have multiple layers of annotation. Um, there can be that traditional layer of marginal notes. Uh, there can also be a public layer where um, everyday citizens or professionals are engaging in conversation around around text. Now in our LMS integration, this public layer is disabled uh, for privacy reasons, um, but I like to keep it in this presentation, even though we're mostly probably gonna be using it within the LMS and, and in a private, uh, private group, um, because one of the neat things about Hypothesis and about the practice of annotation, I think, is that it's not just useful in formal education. Hypothesis is fo focused on uh, delivering annotation technology to uh, the education space, both K-12 and higher ed. Um, but people can use uh, Hypothesis outside of the LMS. Uh, they can use it for everyday note taking. They can use it to start conversations with friends and colleagues around texts. And there are a number of professional applications uh, in which uh, annotation is, is, is very useful. Um, but for the most part, I think we're gonna be talking and, and you guys would be moving forward and using Hypothesis in private groups, uh, a private group scoped to a course or a private group perhaps scoped to a group of colleagues uh, talking about a subject or talking about something that they're uh, teaching. I'm gonna share three top level sort of pedagogical takeaways that I've gathered from students and instructors over the years. Uh, and then I'm gonna take the practical turn and actually begin demoing um, hypothesis for you so you can see what it looks like. And we will have time for questions. It looks like there's a vibrant uh, chat going on. Um, and we will surface some of those and feel free to ask questions. There'll even be an opportunity later to, to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask a question live if you'd like to. So I wanna show these three top level takeaways. The first is that hypothesis or social annotation makes reading active. And this is going back to that sort of nothing new aspect of, of annotation, it's sort of what it's always done. It, it's what Billy Collins talks about in the poem, wanting students to uh, not just lay in an armchair turning pages, but to plant a thought into the wayside, to begin thinking about what they're reading, uh, begin developing their own ideas, their own questions around uh, the content for a course. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one thing I do like to point out with this with this slide, though, that's interesting about annotation 2.0 or annotation in a sort of digital networked uh, environment is that it's no longer just text with which uh, students can can annotate uh, their readings. Right here, we have uh, a student annotating a poem or a line from a poem with a meme. Right. So with hypothesis, you can use images, uh, video, hyperlinks. There's a number of uh, you know multimodal. Uh, forms of composition that can be deployed in annotation by students. And it's not necessary, um, but it's something to think about as uh, for you as teachers about, do I want students to be thinking about how to make arguments with images? Is that something that's useful? Is that something that's valuable for the types of skills and outcomes that I want in my class? This, uh, this takeaway I think is, is pretty new. This idea that hypothesis makes reading uh, visible. And we hear this echoed all the time in, in surveys and testimonials uh, from teachers using our tool. Um, when I handed out that Billy Collins poem to my students, uh, you know, I graded a paper four weeks later. I didn't check that they annotated, didn't talk, teach them how to annotate, what a good annotation uh, was. I didn't talk to them about how to harvest their annotations for something like uh, the writing of a paper. Uh, I just sort of said, it's good for you, do it. And then I graded a summative assignment, like an essay. Um, I think one of the most powerful things about social annotation is the ability to see the processes that students go through, their reading, their annotating, the beginning of their critical thinking. This can mean a few different things, right? Um, it means, first of all, I can see that my students have done the reading, right? So there is an element of reading compliance here, you know, maybe forcing the students to do the reading because there's some assignment involved, you know, right on top of the reading. But I think more importantly, it's about uh, knowing, seeing, being able to see where students are confused in something that they read for your class being able to see where they're most excited, even in individual students, individual line of, of inquiry and be able, being able to nurture that. Being able to be present during that process, I think is a very powerful thing and will make those summative assignments all the stronger uh, because students have gotten feedback 
in those earlier sort of constitutive uh, processes that lead to summative work. Um, this idea that hypothesis makes reading visible. And then finally, uh, that hypothesis makes reading uh, social. This is definitely what the students uh, glom onto uh, that, that we learn from surveys when they talk about the, 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 the usefulness of hypothesis for their own learning. It's always about that they learn from their peers, uh, that they were able to see what their, their, their classmates uh, were thinking. And this is a great quote. I don't know if everybody knows what Facebook is anymore, but this was a quote from several years ago when Facebook was um, cooler, I guess. Now they, there's, the kids are onto other social media. Anyway, hypothesis is my literary Facebook. When I'm reading, I sometimes wonder, does anyone actually understand this? Am I crazy? With this brilliant tool, I know I'm not alone. I certainly had this experience in grad school of sort of feeling very alone um, and sometimes like not smart enough because a reading was confusing to me. And knowing that others are confused, being able to work through that confusion, difficult passages with classmates is incredibly powerful uh, to students. Um, and obviously in the age of the pandemic and not having those other opportunities to connect with teachers and students uh, to get clarity around course content, uh, it becomes even more vital. All right, I'm now going to take a turn towards uh, the practical. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna pause there and ask if there are any questions uh, that I should be addressing before I, I move on. All right, let's keep going. Um, when hypothesis is active on a text, uh, you can select text to annotate. You can reply to existing annotations. I think it's really important to, to know about this feature and to leverage this feature in uh, how you craft assignments or activities for students using hypothesis. Uh, it's true that not all annotation needs to be discursive. There's a, a use case, pedagogical use case for one-off annotations. For example, you might be training students in paraphrase probably not gonna to lead to deep threaded discussion. Um, but generally the, the power of hypothesis comes from the threaded conversation that can be, uh, the threaded conversation that can, can ensue from a particular line of text. And then I've mentioned before this uh, idea of annotating together uh, in groups. So uh, the easiest way to use hypothesis in an academic context is to have it installed in your learning management system. Hypothesis is LTI compliant and so works across LTI compliant LMSs, Schoology, Sakai, Moodle, D2L Brightspace, Blackboard Learn, uh, and Canvas. And what, what the Hypothesis app in these LMS, uh, LMSs allows, allow instructors to do is to eventually make their readings annotatable, uh, deliver, student, deliver readings to students with the power of annotation uh, embedded. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to install Hypothesis in your LMS right now. It's a little different uh, per the different LMSs. It's also not something that uh, all instructors have the privilege to do or the, the sort of power, um, the rights to do within their LMS. It's often an LMS administrator that will need to do the actual installation. Um, so in my demo, we're gonna go and, and sort of assume that, um, that, uh, that the LMS installation has happened for you and then and show you from there. But Farha, please get in touch with us at education at hypothesis um, and connect us to an LMS admin, or if you think you might have the privileges to do the installation yourself, um, then you can uh, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll try to walk you through it. And there's a question about an in-house LMS from Megan. Uh, it depends on whether it's LTI compliant. Uh, LTI is a standard that third-party tools use to integrate with LMSs. Um, and a lot of times even sort of bespoke in-house LMSs will, will have that ability to integrate LTI tools. Um, so that's gonna be a case-by-case a, a -case, uh, basis. Um, all right, and in addition to making your readings annotatable in uh, your LMS, you also be able to grade annotations uh, in your LMS using hypothesis. So students may have a vibrant, uh, deep, uh, expansive conversation on top of one of your course readings. And then you'll be able to zoom in and see just Franny's contributions there, just her annotations and replies, or just Aaron's annotations and replies, and assign a grade in the gradebook. It's optional to make these annotation activities gradable in all the LMSs. So you can make it low stakes or no stakes, but as I'll show you, you can also make it for a grade, which I think uh, less so because of the grade and more so because of, again, the visibility of me being able to see 
yes, did Franny do her three annotations for the reading, but more importantly, you know, where's her thinking at? You know, whatever my goals are for their annotation activity, is Franny meeting those goals? Can I give her advice or, or direction uh, to be a, a better annotator or a better a critical thinker or whatever I'm trying to achieve with, uh, with annotation? All right, so let's go ahead and look at it. I will say that we are going to be looking at it in the Canvas LMS. So those who are at a Canvas school are lucky to get a, a more direct view into how it works for your learning management system. Um, it's very easy for us to demo in Blackboard, D2L, uh, Moodle, Sakai, et cetera. Um, and if you reach out to Education at Hypothesis, we can set up a specific demo in your LMS um, if you're not in Canvas. Um, so again, feel free to reach out to Education at Hypothesis to set up a demo uh, or to, to work with us to try to test and see if you can get it installed yourself. Um, from my perspective, um, all the LMSs essentially function the same. In all the LMSs, there's some pathway for you as an instructor to add an activity uh, use with a third-party tool. Um, and, uh, and that's how you would you know, add, configure a hypothesis reading in your LMS. So we just call it something different. Is it an activity? Is it a resource? Is it a piece of content? In Canvas, it's either an assignment, I'd be going through assignments, or uh, it's a module item. Uh, the latter would be ungraded or not directly connected to the gradebook, and the former would you know, have a direct connection to the gradebook. Let's go ahead and just jump in and see what um, a hypothesis assignment in Canvas looks like. So I'm gonna click on a, an assignment. In this case, there's a, you know, actually a written assignment ahead of the reading. Um, so as I said, I'm an English professor, and so this assignment is asking students to look at you know, five aspects, five poetic elements in this particular poem uh, to identify these elements, uh, to locate an example in the text, uh, to create an annotation and explain how that poetic element is being you know, uh, used by the, by the poet, um, and then actually to use a tag feature within our annotations. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the text. So I'm opening up a poem here, there you have it. I'll zoom in a little. And you have a poem here. And then on the side, this is hypothesis if you haven't seen it before. It's a sidebar drawer that pops in and out. I can change its side if I, size if I want by dragging it. Um, I can hide highlights if I want to just see a text cleanly. I, as I said, I can collapse the sidebar. Um, and I can select text like so, my mouse, and I can highlight, which is a default private act, or I can annotate. Um, and this is the annotation space. And I'll pause here to get, let you get a good look at it, right? Um, you can see my name has come up there. The referent that I selected is being shown. And then there's a place for me to enter text. Um, so I can type text here. Um, I can format that text. I can add a hyperlink to another resource, another text online. Um, I can add an image. I can drop in a YouTube video. And I didn't see that anybody was from one of the more mathematical disciplines, but I can also use latex, which is a way to write uh, math equations. Um, and I can tag my annotations. Uh, there's a place to enter uh, tags. Uh, I like to think that as much as possible, hypothesis is sort of pedagogically agnostic, except for the fact that you know annotation is good for you. But what an annotation should look like is really up to you as an instructor. It's going to vary by discipline. It's going to vary by level, a freshman course versus a senior course. Uh, it may even vary on day one uh, annotation assignments versus day 30 annotation assignments. You can do different things with diff uh, annotation at different times. And it's uh, up to you to sort of decide, what do I want my students doing when they read? What do I, how do I want them annotating? What will show me that they're uh, getting it or that they're practicing certain skills or deploying certain strategies or identifying certain concepts or elements in a text. Um, and then you can uh, you know, use that as how you direct students in an assignment. Again, it may vary assignment by assignment. And tags is a good way to sometimes structure. Of course, you can turn this on and sort of say, talk amongst yourselves, right? Um, have a good conversation. But you can also be more directive and say, I want you looking for these five poetic elements as the example is here, or whatever those three to five things might be for your particular discipline or that particular reading um, or assignment. 
Um, and just to talk a little bit more about tags, some neat things that happen with tags. You saw that I um, had an assignment asking my students to use tags. And you can see here that they're deploying those tags, right? Tone, setting, diction, setting again, diction, imagery, um, metaphor. Students are using different tags. And those tags uh, do three things. So a Angela, what I'm saying here is that like, I create an, uh, an annotation, I make a comment, and then there's a tag associated with it. You can see here, um, and I can actually edit this one since it's my annotation. Um, I've asked a question, whoops, jumped away there. Um, a tag is like a hashtag on Twitter or some kind of concept or term that uh, identifies something that's going on in the annotation. So in this case, I've added the tag tone um, to this annotation, uh, asking about the geese this is more of a professor's example, but uh, let's look at teacher's pet. Um, you know, it's talking about the phrase deep trees um, and thinks about it as an interesting word choice and tries to explain uh, the word choice here. And so then labels that annotation diction because they're talking about uh, word choice. What the tag is will vary for you depending on discipline level, uh, time of, uh, of, of timing of the assignment in, in, the, in the course of a course. Um, that's what a tag is. So the students are then, you know, if you ask them to annotate with tags, kind of metacognitively, metacognitively aware of what they're doing when they annotate. I think, I think it's perfectly fine to be more loose and just say, you know, ask each other questions, uh, have a conversation and see what happens. Um, but if you want to be more directive, if you have specific goals, then tags is a good way to structure that. It'll make students metacognitive, metacognitively aware of what they're doing as they annotate. And then it does two other things. One, I can filter the text when we finally meet, whether that's face-to-face -face, uh, or uh, in a classroom. I can filter the text by a tag. So here we have the tag diction. And again, this is just a dummy course, so it's not, you know, there'd hopefully be more diction annotations here. Um, but I can filter using this search at the top of the hypothesis sidebar for diction, and then just see the diction annotations. And then when we meet uh, synchronously, whether that's face-to-face -face or over Zoom or something like that, I can filter for and pull up just the diction annotations. And now we can have a conversation about diction. Does everybody understand that concept? How is Mary Oliver in this particular poem uh, using word choice to, to make meaning? Um, and I could call out certain students to talk about where, how they identified diction and how it was operating in the poem. Um, so student is metacognitively aware of how they're reading. Uh, you as the instructor can then bring to the fore particular concepts and frameworks and terms and how they're operating in a text and leverage that when you, when you are teaching synchronously. And then finally, if you make it a graded assignment, uh, and this is just in Canvas's speed grader, there's other versions of uh, how this works in other LMSs, but I can go into the grading mode. And the neat thing here about tags is at a glance, I'll quickly be able to see, did my students, you know, did this student, teacher's pet in this case, um, use the tags um, and did they use them correctly? So here um, I'm able to see teacher's pets, two annotations and one reply. Uh, maybe the assignment was due two annotations and one reply and to use tags twice. And then I would know at a glance that um, here teacher's pet has completed the assignment. I can give them a grade um, and I can also give them a private comment. That private comment feature is not available in all the LMSs yet, um, but in Canvas I can grade and then give a private comment and I can cycle through student by student. So this is a filter just for teacher's pets contributions. Um, I can go and see there's a student called class clown who unsurprisingly hasn't done their work. Um, and I can also see uh, model students contributions in isolation and give her a grade um, and a, a comment. So that is largely a hypothesis in the LMS. There's one other thing I want to, to talk about um, and I'll answer Eric's question live right here. Um, hypothesis does not yet work with, with Canvas pages. Um, so it's created as an assignment or a module item as Aaron uh, points out. Um, and I'll go through that process really quick because I think it's, it's valuable um, to see where you get to and what kinds of uh, uh, material you can create hypothesis assignments from. So I've just gone very quickly. Um, I, uh, I, I'm not gonna show you the details because it's Canvas specific, but as I said before, there's some way in your LMS to create an activity 
uh, make it an external, make it powered by an external tool. If hypothesis is installed, you'd select hypothesis. And eventually in all the LMSs, you get to a step much like this, where you have to select the text for annotation. And it can't be a Canvas page, uh, as Eric asked. It either has to be a PDF or a web, web page, something with an, uh, a URL, a web address. Um, and so I have three, those options here. I can uh, enter a URL for an article that might be online somewhere, or I can select a PDF. In Canvas, I can choose that PDF from my Canvas files for a course or from a uh, Google Drive uh, that, that hosts, um, that can host those PDFs. Uh, we don't yet have that ability to use the local files from a course in the LMS and the other LMSs aside from, uh, aside from Canvas. So I'd have to go through Google and you can see here um, that I authorized a Google account and now I'm looking at PDFs uh, that are inside of my, my Google Drive. I can also upload in this process um, and grab something from my device. So let's, um, let's pause and looks like there are a bunch of questions and a lot of helpful links. Thanks to Aaron for dropping the links in there and answering questions. Eric asks, does the PDF have to be published to the web in Google Drive? Um, if you pull the PDF in either right now through upload or you're looking at Google Drive, it will show you all your PDFs um, and then it will uh, make it the right settings for Hypothesis to, uh, to be able to access. Um, so you just need to have it in your Google Drive and then, and then we adjust the settings so that Hypothesis can get there. Marsha asks about uh, books in Kindle uh, or EPUB. Uh, it's a great question. Right now, as I said, it's, it's PDF or web page. Uh, so we don't yet work with EPUB in this context within the LMS. Um, Kindle is a pr proprietary kind of, you know, with Amazon, a very proprietary specific kind of uh, EPUB. Um, other types of EPUB that you might get through or e-text that you might get through a library, we are working on that. We are working with publishers to, um, for example, you might very soon see an option in this menu to uh, go look at my vital source, uh, you know, books that are on my vital source shelf or some other source of proprietary ebook uh, that, that you can access. But for now it's PDFs or web pages. Um, and then Jodine asks a really important question. My classes are large. Can I assign by groups? Can students upload their own PDFs, for example, I'd like to use for peer review? Would I have to upload each student's PDF? So two questions there. Um, one, the question of groups, bigger classes, uh, not wanting 120 students all reading the same poem, totally understandable. Um, and then the second question is about peer review. So let me take the groups question. Um, the groups question and the is one of the major sort of technical issues we're trying to solve right now. Right now, Hypothesis creates a single reading group and annotating group for your course roster. Uh, Jonine, if you happen to be in Canvas and you're using sections within Canvas, we can map to sections uh, within Canvas specifically. Uh, beyond that, we're working it on other solutions per LMS and for other ways that the LMS divvies up students into smaller groups or that you might divvy up students into smaller groups in your LMS, working on a technical solution there. Um, there are some ways in the, in the meantime, inside and outside of Canvas to kind of effectively create small group reading experiences. Um, it's a little extra work, um, so it's possible, but we're also working on making it uh, easier for you, Jodine and others who are interested in not just having one giant reading and annotating group for a course roster, but having some smaller subgroups uh, sectioning or grouping of those students into smaller cohorts. Uh, there are some current solutions, technical, uh, future technical solutions coming. It's one of the major problems we're working on right now. Um, and there's some workarounds in the meantime. The second question is around peer review. So, you know, Hypothesis is really designed for reading published text and having conversation around published text. But as teacher users have taught us, it's incredibly valuable for peer review uh, as well. Um, LMSs do not generally allow students to add content and, and activate a third party tool like Hypothesis. So the answer to Jodine's question, can students upload their own PDFs is no. 
the instructor has to create um, these hypothesis activities. There's no way, way for a student to do it. So it would involve, um, you know, I think the easiest way to do it is, again, if your classes are large, this may be too much. Um, but if I had a class of 20, I'd probably be okay with this. Email me your papers. Um, I'm going to make one giant PDF. And then for the purposes of peer review, then create an hypothesis uh, peer review assignment uh, for that giant PDF with everybody's papers and then assign people to different papers within. Um, so it can be used for peer review, but like with your previous question, Jodine, requires a little extra work. Um, Aaron said that much more cogently than I. You can use hypothesis in small groups, but there are a few extra steps. And Franny's provided a link. What a team we have here. Uh, we are working with to get connections to JSTOR and Muse and EBSCO and ProQuest. Uh, right now, the, the order of operations, Amanda, would be download that article and then upload it to Canvas or, 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 or wherever so that students can access it. But we are actually in conversation with those folks, um, those, those groups, those organizations to have a, a more direct connection so that there may be, as I mentioned before, like a JSTOR button here to go look at you know, your JSTOR shelf. Yeah, a couple questions about using hypothesis outside the LMS. Um, it's possible. Uh, as I mentioned before, folks are using hypothesis outside the context of formal education. It is substantially more work. You have to create uh, an account, as do students. Um, you have to create a private group, and students need to join that private group. Um, and in most cases, you know, students and instructors will be. Um, uh, uh, using a browser extension. So you have to go and, and do that as well. Maybe somebody can just drop in the kind of uh, getting started link for, for, uh, for Scott and, uh, and others that are interested in using hypothesis. I like to call it using hypothesis in the wild. A um, little more work, but totally possible. Arun asks, if I wanted to incorporate accessibility features into my annotations, is there an add-on for that, like screen reader or text-to-speech? Thanks, Franny. Um, so it's not an add-on. Our tool is WCAG AA compliant. So anybody using a screen reader uh, should be able to read a text and uh, and and or you know listen to a text and and listen to the annotations associated with certain pieces of that text, um, and also to create annotations. Uh, we're WCAG AA compliant, which is kind of the official like box ticking uh, that's needed. We're really dedicated to accessibility as a social justice issue. So we're going beyond box sticking and I'll just be transparent to say that some text readers play, our screen readers play better with hypothesis uh, than others. So Arun, depending on your context, um, you know, we could drill down into the details about which, which, uh, which screen readers um, operate a little more elegantly with, with the ways that we've built out um, the accessibility features within hypothesis. Cool. Um, so uh, let me now just sort of wrap up my presentation and then we'll, we'll see if there's any other questions. Um, but now that the demo is out of the way, we can still take technical questions and others, but I just wanna tell you a little bit about what might be your next steps, uh, depending on where you in your thinking or your institution is. Um, we have a pilot program, uh, which is sort of the first step for instructors interested in using hypothesis uh, or schools interested in using hypothesis. We have a huge community of schools, K through 12 and higher ed schools across the world that are using hypothesis, piloting or subscribing to hypothesis. Here's a, a glimpse, probably hasn't been updated with recent uh, agreements that have been signed, um, but we're, we're all over the place. Um, with a great community of folks teaching us about the value of annotation um, and teaching us about what we need to do better uh, for students and instructors. So your options, essentially, if you're interested, um, the, the real takeaway should be, you know, reach out to education um, oops, uh, at Hypothesis and get the conversation started. Um, but you can trial Hypothesis if you're able to install a Hypothesis in your LMS um, or get your friendly neighborhood LMS administrator to do a course level installation. You can uh, install it, uh, even if you have, I guess we're really out of time here uh, for the fall, but you can get it installed and kind of run a couple assignments with it for, in a course for you know, one academic term up to 50 students if you kind of want to be the, the pioneer at your school to kind of give it a test, uh, make sure everything I'm saying is, uh, rings true for you and your practice. Um, so there is a free trial that you can enter into, uh, or we have a pilot program 
um, which is more fully supported. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and that would, you know, uh, have us working with you, maybe your Center for Teaching and Learning, your LMS admin, uh, administration, get the app installed, uh, get a pilot cohort together. We're incredibly hands-on in, in the way that we run pilots. Aaron, who's on the call here, uh, runs our pilot programs and gets rave reviews from our partners in terms of how helpful she is in teaching folks about the tool and working collaboratively with folks to, to meet their teaching goals uh, by leveraging hypothesis. Um, so free trial, uh, pilot program, which comes at a very small cost. Um, and then after that, there's a subscription, uh, you know, using the evidence from a pilot uh, uh, experience to, um, to, to bring it to, to more folks at, at a school. Uh, Carol asks, I would love to post this session for my teaching colleagues to see, is that possible? Yes, we will be sharing a recording of this um, and you can distribute that. Uh, it's also possible, Carol, that you may, uh, we, you can schedule us to, uh, to give a, a live you know, uh, demo and conversation uh, for your colleagues. Uh, if you can get them together uh, on a webinar, maybe you're not on Canvas, you wanna see a demo in your particular LMS. Uh, you might have some particular goals at your institution. Uh, or in the programs that you're working with. And we can really drill down and talk about like, all right, these are your goals. This is how we think hypothesis could help and annotation could help you achieve those goals. Um, so we can tailor something specific, but yeah, there'll be a recording uh, to share as well. And I'll, when I get to my stopping point, I'll also grab the URL for this deck. Don't know how helpful that would be, but, um, but I'll share the deck as well. I'm very proud of the pilot program that Aaron's put together. Um, obviously we offer, uh, you know, uh, tier one uh, technical support in support of uh, students and instructors and staff using hypothesis and pilot programs are uh, pilot uh, schools are prioritized in our support queue and we have a great support team uh, who's incredibly uh, responsive uh, to every every question we get uh, every ticket we get um, but I'm also very proud of the fact that we offer pedagogical support Everybody that I've hired, sales, support, success at Hypothesis has stood up in front of a classroom and taught uh, before. We all have backgrounds in education and actually diverse backgrounds. So, you know, I'm the English guy, but one, one of our members of our success team, uh, Becky, is, has a science education background and her background is more K through 12, mine's more higher ed. Um, so we have a diverse range of folks with education backgrounds and we wanna have conversations with instructors about how they can use the tool. And so we have, you have the ability as part of our pilot program to sign up for one-to-one -one, uh, consultations and really you know, get down to brass tacks with somebody around like, look, I'm teaching biology, I'm having students read academic articles in the field of biology, and I want them getting this out of it. Um, and that's something that we can work with you on. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of community programs to try to bring uh, instructors and Across disciplines or within specific disciplines together to talk about social annotation uh, in their work. Um, the best example of that, I think, is our Liquid Margins program, which is actually emceed uh, by uh, Franny, who's on the call here. Um, and Liquid Margins is a, a regular show that we run where we invite, as I mentioned, instructors from specific disciplines or with specific uh, goals or from certain types of institutions to have conversations around uh, social annotation. So you can see here, we have some around um, mathematics, uh, English, uh, as well as just kind of social justice and, and college success. So all different kinds of themes and Franny's created the link there. Um, and we're also doing a lot of research around social annotation and its efficacy. And we have our first scholar in residence, um, Rami Kalir, who is working with a number of schools and programs to look closely at how social annotation is being deployed and how effective it's being for, for certain learning goals. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about that Rami is working on is with uh, Indiana University has adopted hypothesis for its composition across its composition program. Um, and, you know, students are, are using annotation as part of freshman comp uh, at, at, at Indiana. And we're going to Look at the work they do with social annotation and how it affects the writing, which of, of course is the goal of that course. Um, and so stay tuned if that's a, an area of interest for you, how uh, annotation can, uh, social annotation can help students uh, become better, better writers. I will stop there with 15 minutes left and see if there are any additional questions or if my colleagues want to raise anything that I forgot. Um, but that is uh, Hypothesis 101. 
uh, social annotation for beginners. And if you want to unmute, I think you can may maybe raise your hand or something and I'll, I'll allow you to talk quite like the, the pedagogical assumptions there. Um, I wish you guys could all just speak up, but of course that can create some noise. Um, so feel free to, to raise a hand and I'll unmute you or ask a question uh, in the chat. Marsha asks a good one. What are the advantages of using hypothesis over, uh, over other tools like Perusal? Um, that's probably a webinar in and of itself. I think one, uh, two major differences I'll start with. One is just our, our orientation. You know, Perusal is a reader, right? It's, a, it's a, an e-reader. And so they, you go to their platform where they sell texts um, and they, they do have social annotation abilities uh, there. Hypothesis is a tool that you bring to text or that you point to text. So just the orientation there of being kind of a platform where everybody has to go versus a tool that can move around uh, is a kind of different, you know, software and philosophical uh, approach. I think, you know, being able to move to different texts uh, is a powerful, you know, uh, difference with hypothesis. Um, it also makes for differences on a practical level uh, you know, I think hypothesis is more deeply integrated into the learning management system. Again, with Perusal, you're essentially leaving the LMS to go to another platform. Um, and, and with hypothesis, you know, it's integrated into the workflows as we saw with Canvas. Uh, it's an, an assignment workflow. It's with the, uh, with the module item workflow. So there's, I think, a deeper integration with LMS as a result of sort of how uh, the software is designed as a tool rather than uh, a platform. Uh, the other is that, you know, uh, Hypothesis makes agreements with schools uh, to support Hypothesis use and Perusal is selling textbooks. That's how they make money. Um, so it sort of would be up to you, I suppose, or your institution about which of those models is more suitable for students, instructors, and the institution as a whole. Um, you know, we're, we're directly collaborating with, uh, with an institution and it's, it's administrators and instructors and Perusal, as I said, is uh, partnering with publishers to, to resell textbooks. Um, uh, uh, oh, the other thing, Marsha, that's important to note, uh, to, to think about with, uh, with Perusal versus Hypothesis um, is one, to check on accessibility with Perusal. As I said, Hypothesis is WCAG compliant. Um, and I'm not sure where Perusal is there. Last I checked, they were not. Um, and also around the differences with copyright. Um, and copyright compliance and uh, whether it's you know appropriate to upload things to Perusal at your institution or whether it's better because of the way hypothesis is set up to um, point a tool to that stuff. Nota bene, uh, old school annotation, not really sure. Uh, I don't think it's been around for a while. I'm not sure it's super active anymore. Um, that's another tool very similar. I think Nota bene is one of the early kind of social annotation tools. Um, uh, and uh, but I, I haven't really heard about them being sort of actively supported uh, and, and developed like Hypothesis is. Thank you, Angelo. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any hands raised. Have I missed anything, colleagues? I think you've actually been incredibly comprehensive. <laughs> nice work. Yeah, you're so on your game today, Jeremy. I'm I know. Kind of at a loss for what to I've, do. I finally recovered from Thanksgiving. <laughs> Monday was rough. <clears throat> so I just want to reemphasize. Um, what well, this is a great question. David says, "What can I tell the IT folks in my institution about how much work it would be for them to integrate?" Uh, hypothesis. That is a great question, David. Um, it is very easy to add an LTI tool technically, right? It takes five minutes to add hypothesis to a course. So that's not um, a complicated thing. Um, obviously, there are a lot of times you're, those IT folks may want to do security reviews, accessibility reviews. So the standard review process um, that they have may, you know, be some work that they'll want to do. Although we have documentation around our security practices and accessibility uh, that we can share. Uh, so David, if you reach out to education, you're like, hey, 
I want to go to my IT folks with everything in hand. We can send you some supporting document um, documentation to pass on and say, hey, they're accessible. They're accessible, and they have this um, uh, security documentation to help you move forward. Uh, you should also note that they could install it just on your course level to to give it a try, David. It doesn't have to be like your every individual in the institution is suddenly using it. Um, and the other thing to add in terms of the work that it would take uh, a school to integrate Hypothesis is that I think unlike some other tools, uh, we really offer support, complete support, uh, both technical and pedagogical for our partners. Um, so we are not handing off the tool to some group like IT to conduct support. Of course, people might be writing into them but we welcome your IT folks or your support folks to send all questions to us uh, so that we can do the work of supporting the tool uh, rather than again, just sort of selling the tool and then uh, you know, skipping town as it were. Um, I hope that helps uh, answer what is a, a good question, really the, the end of this, you know, every, every time we have this, we should talk about David's question here. Um, Sarah asked an interesting question too. Is there any way to do this as a discussion board on Canvas or is it only workable on assignments? So curious about the question, Sarah. I think a lot of people view hypothesis as an alternative to the discussion board. You know, like if, is the discussion board really not getting the kind of discussion you want? Why not move that discussion to hypothesis in the form of either an, an assignment in Canvas uh, or uh, a module item in Canvas um, and, and maybe get more authentic conversation going there um, uh, as opposed to kind of the rote, you know, reply to the instructor's prompt in the discussion board. But in, to literally answer your question, I don't think you can sort of host a hypothesis reading within, um, within the discussion board itself. But in, in terms of Canvas, Sarah, one of the interesting things is that I kind of feel like hypothesis assignments within Canvas operate like discussion form in Canvas because like in a discussion form, you can sort of isolate a particular student's contributions and grade them. Same thing with, with the way hypothesis assignments work. Um, I have seen some instructors use them kind of uh, in complementary uh, ways where maybe broader, um, broader questions are appropriate for a discussion forum, um, but then other types of discussion, breakdowns of specific passages um, would be handled better in, in you know, using social annotation. Thanks, Eric. Uh, th thanks for agreeing with me, but also elaborating on the sort of difference between discussion forums as kind of a separate tab versus discussion as it might take place in the context of a text. Um, as an English teacher, of course, and I don't think I'm alone in, I don't think English is alone in this. Um, uh, we want students to stay close to the text. You know, argumentation needs to be based in evidence. Um, and so rather, rather than uh, move away from that source of evidence, uh, having the discussion there uh, can help students be more um, beholden to the, or more you know, sensitive to the claims they're making um, and how they're substantiated. You've been a great audience. You have great questions. Thank you for your help in raising some, some things that weren't part of my formal presentation or that I didn't necessarily have on my agenda. There have been some good questions that really uh, that were really helpful, I think, to, to, to others. Um, I'm just going to, for the millionth time, drop in the Education at Hypothesis address, um, because I think for many of you, that might be the next step, reaching out to us to get support, uh, either for your installation uh, or to connect us with um, folks at your institution. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, others, for joining today. And please be in touch. We want to help.